It's time for this week's episode of the Focused Mindset Podcast. And today I'm going to clarify some ways that you can reach your kids if you were going through the questions that we talked about last week. Last week, we talked about some questions that I learned when I went through a program, uh, a basically training program from Capturing Kids Hearts. And then I had a parent reach out to me and say, how can I practically use these questions to be able to be more effective? Because it kind of stomps on discipline and I want to start being a disciplinarian. And I said, no problem. I'm going to do a podcast about it. And it also helps to know that we can use these same steps, whether we're talking to adults whether we're in our workplace, wherever we are, we can navigate the tools in our life to be able to help us be better communicators. Now, I was also thinking in my, uh, I was actually my mastermind group, and I was considering how quickly each season is flying by. And I want to give you guys a call of action right here at the beginning to slow down enough to spend time with your family. Make sure that you prioritize spending time with the people that you love. I remembered a long time ago, before I had kids, uh, my husband and I were involved in a network marketing company. And the couple that was working with us were amazing go-getters. They were so, they were on fire when they were doing their work. They were like many people doing that type of business where they had full-time jobs during the day. And... I met them because the mother uh, was had their child in my preschool class. I was a preschool teacher at the time. And I remember thinking many times before I got involved with that couple doing the network marketing, that it was interesting that their child was almost always the very first person dropped off and then the very last one to be picked up. That means that they were there for the complete duration of that preschool being open. We opened at around six and we closed at six, 12 hours. Now, did we have an amazing program? Of course we did. I believe in preschool. I think preschool is amazing for kids, but to be there for that amount of hours, I wish I could have had the knowledge as a person in my early twenties of thinking, wait a minute, what is it? about their values, that they're keeping their child in daycare this long, that maybe doesn't line up with my values. But at the time when I was young and just thinking, yeah, I want an opportunity to be able to be an entrepreneur, I jumped right into that company. And what I realized is that that company's values taught them that you know, when you reach your goals, when you get where you're going to go, then you're going to be able to have that quality time with your child. And your child is going to understand and respect the fact that you're a hard worker and you're teaching them hard work by doing this because it won't be long, a year or two, maybe three, and you're going to be able to enjoy all your time. You're going to be able to free up your time. The problem is, is that as you're, as they were working in that time, their child started to grow up and their child got older and they got older. And throughout the time that I worked with them, I noticed all the hours that they were missing with their kids. And you know, when that time finally came, if it did, because we parted ways at, at one point, that they had their free time that they were hoping for. They're sitting in front of a child that they hardly know. They're sitting in front of a child that they failed to have conversations with and ongoing things. Now, I'm, they may have had many conversations, but I learned that those children many times were coming from daycare over to their grandparents' house so they could build their business at night. Now, I am all for building businesses and being an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur. I mean, here I am, I own my own business and I do work outside of my school counseling and I love it, but I have to keep myself in check in my writing. I mean, I want to dig in and spend a whole day just writing my book. And then I think, yes, writing is important, 
but balance is also important. And the call of action that I want you guys to consider before we even move forward with this is, is my time balanced? Yes, you're busy. Yes, you have a lot going on, but that does not excuse you from having balance in our life. That doesn't give you an excuse to go ahead and just chuck it and say, well, I'm doing it for this and that. What do you want your child's narrative to be in their child in, when they grow up and they look back at their childhood and forget when they grew up, when they are seven, what do you want them to be saying about their memories of when they were six and five in their own mind? What do you want their memories to be when they're 10? What do you want them to say to their friends when they ask them about their, your relationship and how you get along with them? When they're 12, when they're 15, as they're growing up, they're cementing in those memories. If you're not there the very year before, their thoughts are saying, oh, well, he's not there very much, or she's not there very much, or they're not there very much. And then that begins to be the narrative in their mind until that is their story, until that is their memories of their childhood. And more than that, I know that our children grow and change. They have different passions. And if you don't find that balance, then you are going to have gaps. You're going to have things where you're like, wait a minute, I don't even know my child's favorite color. I don't know what they enjoy doing. I don't know these things because you failed to have those conversations and those times. Now, when we're busy, which we are, we can get very critical of the things we have to do and we need to do. And that is not what I'm talking about you doing right now is starting to beat yourself up for all the things you're doing wrong. What I'm saying instead is, is there some things that you can do differently to make sure that you have balance? Do you need to rethink a couple of the activities that you do, how you do them, when you do them? Are you asking your child open-ended questions and listening to them and giving them time are you just blasting the music or listening to something that you're interested in when you're in the car with them? Or are you taking that minute to step into their worldview? I'm going to give you that thought right now because I know that you and I can revisit our values and then shift it just a little bit and the complete narrative of our entire life can change. I chose not to be a part of that particular company because I realized the values, some of the values aligned great, working hard, building a business, being an entrepreneur, but the part of saying work really hard and it's okay if you're giving up certain quality time because you're going to build time back sometimes just isn't the case. I know that there's some very wealthy and prosperous and successful people that have built their businesses and built their life all the way through their critical growing up years. And then they stop and they say, I don't even know my family. I was talking to somebody the other day and they said, no, I got rid of my company because I'm rebuilding my relationship with my family. He said, I realized that it's never too late to do that. And I'm starting now. And that's what we can do. We don't beat ourselves up for what we have done, but rather we say, where am I at now? What do I need to adjust? It's never too late to build a relationship because people that love you want a relationship with you. Yes, you might need to listen to some things that they have in their mind about the way that you behaved and the way that you weren't there and kind of like eat it and not give excuses and say, yeah, you're right. I wasn't at that game or I wasn't at that. And there are times when kids need to understand that it's impossible for you to be there and that you're doing something else that's also valuable to their life, like making money to put food on the table. But it's your job to sit down and help them understand that. You can't assume that they know that. You have to let them know that you want to hear everything about what they did, even in your absence, and watch the videos and celebrate and laugh with them and enjoy the moment that you have. So even if you're a parent that says, you know, this sounds great, but what happens if I can't stop beating myself up because I have to work? In the case that you do, 
and you know that it's not about balance. It's about putting the food on the table, basically, and paying the bills. You still need to have the responsibility to connect with your child and find a way to do that. Don't assume that they know. Talk to them. And then they're going to feel as though you're right there in their heart because you chose to make it important, because you checked in, because you text. All these things matter. So think about how you can build connections by creating balance in your life and prioritizing the relationships in your life. Now, let's get down to business. Last week, we talked about some questions that you can ask yourself, your loved ones, your kids, in order to help them stay on track. Let's take the focus right now towards if we're helping kids get back on task. Uh, a child that's way off task, let's say even in it, whether you're a teacher right now, these skills were designed for teachers to use. The questions that we learned last week and we talked about was, what are you doing? What are you supposed to be doing? Are you doing that? And what can you do differently? Or what are you going to do about it? We talked about how it's important that we use the right tone in saying that so it doesn't sound derogatory, that we have the right body language, that we're doing it in love. But we've got to do this in the right way as well. We needed to have some framework around it. So I appreciate my friend reaching out and saying, how do I actually put this in action? So here are the steps that Capturing Kids Hearts teaches in order to make these questions work. First, initially, ask the question only two times. You're not going to berate them over and over again. You're going to know going into this that I see a child that's off task. They've, they've gotten, they've, they've missed the boat. They're in the wrong path. And this is going to be what I'm going to do first. This is going to be my discipline. My discipline is going to be these, start out with these very questions to give them an opportunity to change before we move into consequences, before we move into the next phase of someone who might be straight up defiant. So step one. Initially, plan to ask the question only two times. Second, create silence. Silence is powerful. It causes the mind to say, oh, I really do need to wake up and think about this for myself. This isn't just an ongoing lecture that I've heard a million times. I'm taking part in this. So after each question, create silence. Make sure, step three, that you give a genuine affirmation about this person, not their behavior. So what does this mean? When you affirm them, when you're saying, you know, I believe that you have this within you to do this. You're not talking about the behavior that they're doing in that moment that's wrong as much as affirming the person that they are, that they have it with them. I know that you've done hard things before. This isn't the first hard thing you've done. So that's the type of conversation that you have around these questions, not about the actual wrong behavior that they're doing. Isn't that the opposite of what we sometimes do? It's for them to identify what they're doing, should they be doing it, and whether they could, what are they going to do about it, not for you. Your part is bringing up the question and affirming that you know they're the type of person that can figure this out and change it. Next, after you say the question once, ask the question again. Not raising your tone, not changing that body language and tone that you chose to have, but just simply ask it again so they can internalize it. If they weren't really paying that close of attention the first time and you gave them some silence and you let them know that they're the type of person that can do this, ask the question again. What happens if you don't get an appropriate answer? Well, that moves to our next step. 
If you don't get a pro- uh, an appropriate answer or they're smart aleck or what do you think I'm doing? Or they try and come back at you with uh, something uh, completely unhelpful. Then you move to a statement such as this. You may either answer the question or you're choosing to have a consequence. Then give that space of silence. And they are regrouped to answering the question rather than saying a smart aleck remark about it. And then if you don't get an answer and you went through all these steps to give them the opportunity to answer, affirm that and then move on to the next question. Don't keep asking the same question over and over and over again. Okay. Just move on to the next question because they probably answered it in their head. And when you finish that sequence and you set it in the right way, if they're choosing not to move forward with you, that is when you give the consequence. If they're choosing not to move forward with this situation and then answer, what are you going to do about it? And say, well, I'm going to get back to my task or, well, I'm going to stop messing around or, well, I'm going to stop speaking rudely. If they don't, then that's when we talk about what needs to be done about this. It's not an argument. It's not a yelling match. It's time to move to consequence time, whatever that is, whatever you've chosen to do for your step-by-step. A classroom should have very clear steps and guidelines as to what happens if someone's uh, disobeying or not on task. Why not give them the opportunity to correct it before you move to that? That doesn't mean you don't move to it. If you go through this whole part, then you move to that next part. So, The next thing I want to do is read the guidelines that Capturing Kids Hearts has. I'm just going to read them one by one because I think this could be helpful to you as you're putting these questions into practice. You're spending more time with your child. You don't want it to be full of just like, what are you doing here in the wrong way? You want to state things in the right way because that's the type of person that you are. And here are the tips if you're using these coaching tools. This is technically coaching tools uh, for uh, a teacher, for a counselor, for an administrator, for a parent, for a boss. So here we go. Ask only the given questions. Don't deviate off your script. No lecturing before, during, or after the questions. Don't move to the next question until you gave a clear opportunity to answer the first one you asked. Don't fall for smoke screens. But only if it's your fault. Well, no, I can't. I'm hurting a pain. No, those are smoke screens. Stay on task. Don't blame. Don't bail them out by giving them the answer or part of the answer to the question. Doesn't matter if you're talking to a kindergartner. Don't bail them out by answering the question for them. Don't approach the student when your buttons are pushed. Mm, We talked about that last week, didn't we? When you're being triggered, your whole demeanor will be different. So step away. Not the time to do it. Watch your body language. Watch your tone. That's the next one. These questions are not a secret. You can put them on the wall. You can talk about them. They need to know that this is a line of questioning that you are going to ask them when they're off task. And the next step is teach students the correct response. And when you do and they give the right response, say thank you. Say, I appreciate that. I notice that you gave the right response. So in, in a parenting form, that would be like beforehand, you say, you know, what would be an appropriate response to these questions? Let's talk about it. Let's go through it. And then when they do give a response and they change, which it's not easy for a child to change, then you say, thank you. I appreciate that, that you did that. And the last uh, coaching tip is teach students, check yourself first and then check uh, the person next to you. All right, so keep yourself in check. (laughs) It's so easy for kids to look around. They're not doing what they should be doing, but they, but they, but they, no. Teach a child, check yourself first. 
Let's get in the habit of being able to do that. So I just wanted to read those straight from the manual of when I got trained with Catcher and Kim's Hearts. I feel like this empowerment tool is the most powerful, most solution focused part of the Capturing Kids Hearts programs. When we are solution focused, it means that we're taking away from the problem and we're giving into something that actually works using questions, empowering another person to be able to see the solutions that are around them so they can be their best self. This is one way to do it. You're going to find that there's ways that work for you. Don't stay in one line. Yes, they're going to have these questions or, or maybe you create your own. You know, in a perfect world, our family meetings would go perfectly, right? So for a small percentage of you, this next part of my podcast, you'll be able to do. But for most of us, our family meetings can be uh, one person rolling their eyes, one person complaining, one person can't wait to get back to their conversation with their friend, one person wanting to eat because they're hungry, or the family meetings just don't happen at all. So when I say um, family meeting, it's more like when you're all gathered together, look for your opportunities to communicate expectations. A family meeting is basically giving people a voice to talk and having an opportunity to communicate your expectations. And when you do that, the hope is that the next confrontation, the next problem is going to run smoother because of that first conversation you had. So in order to begin with the end in mind, if you are having an official family meeting, or it's just a time when you guys are all gathered. Say, what is our best hopes for this next thing that we're doing, whether it be a family vacation that's coming up or an activity? How do we think we might be able to get there? And then brainstorm and talk about it together so we're all on board, we're all on the same page. And then you can say, you know, if I notice that we're getting off task, Let's make some questions that we can ask ourselves and ask each other to help us stay on point. Now, they might be these very questions. What are you doing? What are you supposed to be doing? Are you doing that? And what are you going to do about it? Or it might be two or three completely different questions that work for you and your family and your dynamics with your relationships, whatever it is. In the last two episodes, we want to help ourselves be in check. So we can communicate, so we can enjoy that time with our family. So it's not full of strife. So it's not at the end of it all going, oh, I know I like spending time with them, but I have to tell myself, I like spending time with them. I like spending time with them. I do, I do, I do. We want it to be authentic. We want us to be able to notice all the funny, little, quirky, silly things about each other and then take it in and walk forward with those memories fully intact. And sometimes discipline can sabotage that. The discipline time, the yelling time, the the time of saying, ah, stop doing what you're doing. I hope that these tips can help you move forward through your activity and find more joy find more happiness, find what you need so you can have that balance because then you're going to be going back into work and going back into the craziness of whatever the school, when the school year starts and everything like that. And you want to be able to revisit these memories and you want them to be full of joy. So balance is very important. Not giving yourself excuses for the busyness of life taken away from the time that you have with family and then establishing how you're going to communicate early so it doesn't end in something that isn't in line with your best hopes. So it's time for me to get going. I hope you enjoyed this. I did video this and audio this podcast, and that's what I'm going to be trying to do more and more lately. Um, those of you that are watching, you might see that I'm going to take this clip and use it different ways. I want to do some creative things. I've kind of got away from doing video and I want to kind of challenge myself to do what I can do to record. Does it mean there's going to be a few more mistakes? Probably. Does it mean that I can't come maybe come and show up for you guys, uh, audibly with just the microphone. But then if you saw me, oh, I'm a hot mess. 
I'm going to need to fix up at least a tad. And then we're going to have some videos that will be in um, the podcast that will be put in video form and put on YouTube. Now, if you go over to my YouTube, share the focused mindset, that's share like my name, C-H-E-R, you're going to see that I have a podcast right there. If you have YouTube music, it's such a cool app. You can actually have podcast now in a very similar way that you do on Apple and Spotify, and it comes in a whole playlist and everything. So I have put mine on YouTube. Most of them are audio, which is great. You could just put on your headphones, listen, and I have a just cute little visual that you can look at. But more and more, you're going to see that I'll have them just like this, face-to-face -face on video and on audio. So I hope you enjoy both of those. I give you full permission to share if your thought that came of is like, I have to reach out to someone who needs this. Be true to your moment of choice and go ahead and share this episode. And that's the way that we can all learn to have a focused mindset. And don't forget to check the show notes where you can see the helpful links. I'm giving away my journaling prompts and conversation starters right now on my website, thefocusedmindset.com. And I'll leave a link for you below to make sure that you can get your copy of that as well. So you can start today at journaling and making sure that you're keeping yourself in touch. You can get 30 Days to Higher Hopes on Amazon and you can use all these tools to help yourself be the very best version of yourself. So until next time, live solution focused.